Dry flood proofing. Sounds almost redundant, doesn't it? You'd expect flood proofing to keep a building dry, and there are ways to do that, including picking the building up or building a levee or flood wall around it. But dry flood proofing refers to a special process that makes a building watertight. Water touches the outside walls, but the inside and all the contents stay dry. When you dry flood proof a house, doors, windows, and all the pathways water could use to enter the building must be blocked. Even then, water will still find its way in unless the walls are sealed. Walls are not waterproof, whether they're covered with siding or brick veneer. Watch when water is poured inside this block. It flows right out through the cement, but not where a sealant has been applied. Water will wick through a slab, much like it goes through bricks and blocks. Plastic sheeting laid down before the slab was poured protects the bottom, but the sides will need to be sealed several inches below ground level. Water will also leak through slab openings near toilets and tubs if they are not sealed. When retrofitting existing flood-prone buildings, two primary methods are used to seal the walls. Coating the walls with a waterproof compound or covering them with a waterproof membrane. Excavate along the slab footing. Clean the wall and slab surfaces so the sealant or film will bond well. On brick veneer walls, apply the sealant over the existing brick. Make sure all the small openings around faucet, outlets, and drain lines are sealed. Weep holes require special attention. Weep holes are small gaps between bricks at the base of the wall. They allow ventilation and provide a method for water that gets behind the bricks to drain. Blocking the weep holes may increase humidity levels in the wall, but if the choice is between possible humidity problems and a certainty of flood damage, filling weep holes to avoid flood damage may be the better choice. It is possible to keep functioning weep holes by installing drains in them that extend through the sealant. These would need to be fitted with caps or valves. The effect of sealing walls and closing weep holes in our humid, rainy climate is not known, but those effects can be minimized by reducing water penetration above the flood proofing. Apply clear sealant or paint on the upper wall and give special attention to possible rain leaks around window frames. Also, on the interior of sealed walls, Monitor moisture levels along baseboards and avoid using vinyl wallpaper. Moisture in the wall needs to be able to dry to the inside. Several materials have been used in Louisiana for sealing walls. Even though the coating provides the necessary flood protection, you may want to cover it with something that matches or blends in with the rest of your home. Brick tile, mortared and grouted directly to the sealant works well. Since brick tiles, also called pavers, are light, their weight can be supported by the existing wall and foundation. They're thin, so it's not necessary to lengthen the outside faucets, which a full brick veneer would require. If pavers matching your brick aren't available, buy a full brick and slice it. The match will be nearly perfect, and most people won't even notice you've done something to the house. Remember, the veneer, whether it's full brick or brick tile, is purely cosmetic. It is not needed for the flood proofing to be effective. Waterproof membrane can be used instead of sealant over brick veneer or when the exterior wall is covered with siding. Here, the siding was removed on the lower part of the wall and the membrane was applied to the underlying sheathing. In cases where there was no sheathing, the membrane has been installed directly over the siding. On this home, a membrane was used over brick and covered with stucco rather than veneer. There are no waterproof membranes manufactured for the purpose of floodproofing walls, but has been used as a waterproof roofing material. This roofing film is self-healing, so it won't leak around nails used to attach siding or other veneer. Closures for windows and doors are still a challenge, both in how easy they are to handle and in their appearance. They can be mounted in small, specially constructed flood walls built around the door or window area, rather than directly in the door frame or window frame. Dry flood proofing principles can be used in emergency protection systems if you have sufficient warning time and have purchased the materials in advance. You'll need lumber, plywood, 
polyethylene sheeting, duct tape, an assortment of hardware, and a pump to take care of leakage. It is best to pre-cut the lumber and plywood and construct braces in advance. The wrapping system developed by the Louisiana Cooperative Extension Service cost about $1,000 for materials. You and your family and friends supply the labor. Wrapping protected this home from 34 inches of water in 1983. Here are some important points to consider when dry flood proofing a building. The building walls will be exposed to significant unbalanced pressure. Properly constructed walls in good condition can withstand the pressure from three feet of standing water. Dry flood proofing should not be applied to a level more than three feet. It is not practical for floods lasting more than a day or two. Over time, water may seep through the soil and you may experience damaging upward buoyant force on the slab. For a building on piers, piles, or foundation walls, sealing would be more difficult and the cost of dry flood proofing would be near the cost of elevating. Since elevation provides better protection, reduces flood insurance premiums, and makes the structure compliant with local building codes, it would be the preferred method. Dry flood proofing a residential structure does not make it compliant with flood damage prevention ordinances. Most local governments treat the process as they would installing new siding. However, it may be subject to regulation and permitting in your community. Check with the local permit department. Remember to prevent backflow through the sewer system and raise the air conditioner. Selecting a permanent sealant material be sure it has a long life expectancy when exposed to sunlight and temperature extremes or sealed in an airtight dark cavity. Here in Louisiana, it is especially important to choose a material that will not support termite infestation and to install the system in such a way that a hidden path is not created for termites to infest the building. Permanent dry flood proofing is a complex process and should only be done by a professional.